Hello, good evening, good evening. Um, happy Tuesday. I was about to say happy Monday because it feels like a Monday, but um, it's actually Tuesday. Please excuse the noise in the background because Kalia is downstairs on the computer. She's doing some stuff, so um, you might hear her yelling and screaming at her computer while she's downstairs, but I just wanted to hop on here for a few minutes. I didn't really plan on going live today. Hey, Minister Reggie. Um, I didn't plan on going live today, but, um, I was just in here. We just got a hit not too long ago from an appointment or whatever, but, um, I didn't plan on going live today, but I was just in here and, um, I don't know. I just felt something heavy on me to just go live and just kind of talk about my experience just with spiritual warfare, just with, um, being in a position where I'm the one that's having to break like, um, generational cycles and things like that. And, um, some of you guys may be able to relate to that. First of all, I just want to thank you guys um, for your prayers. I normally do not get on Facebook and solicit prayers. I normally don't just go around asking people for prayers because, first of all, I just that's just not what I do um, because I don't know who people praying to, first of all. And then, um, you know, but it was just very heavy on me to solicit prayers for my daughter. And I'm not going to go into detail about her. This video is not about her. It's not really about her per se, but it's just about um, just my experience with, with spiritual warfare. And then just, it's just, this thing is just real, guys. Like, if you believe in God, you believe in the enemy, right? If you believe in the enemy, then you believe in his minions that he got working for him, right? And it amazes me sometimes when believers, when Christians who say they believe in God, say they believe in the devil, um, say certain things like it's not that deep or it's not always the enemy and things like that, which we know we, it's not always the enemy. We know that. However, we can't, um, negate the fact that he is a powerful being, right? The Bible tells us to put on the whole armor of God, right? So if he wasn't powerful, why would we need that arm of God, right? So he does have some power. Does he have power over us who are in Christ? No, but we can't deny something. We can't overcome something that we constantly deny, right? So I just want to share a little bit with you guys, just my experience. Like I said, I am tasked with having to break generational cycles and even generational curses. And the reason why I say I am tasked with that is because just to give you guys a little bit of my background, some of you guys know, some of you guys have read my books and you know a little bit about my story, but my family, the cycles in my family, the women, first of all, my mother, she, she died at 45 when I was 10. The women in my family, they tend to not live long. Um, a lot of the women in my family, they tend to die early. They tend to be um, on drugs, alcohol, and things like that. And myself and my cousins, my first cousins, none of us have our mothers, right? Um, even my aunt that is actually still living. She is, she has bipolar, schizophrenia. Like, she has a lot of stuff going on. These are the type of things that we deal with in my family, right? And so, you guys know me. I, I'm an open book. These are the type of things I've run in my family. And it's been like this going back as long as as long as I know or as long as anybody could tell me and so I have literally been the first person in my family that I know of it could be some I don't know if I got a distant cousin or anything when I mean when I say my family I mean my immediate family that I know of who have been intentional about trying to break these cycles that are in in our family both on my mother's side and my father's side and when I was nine, I was just led to the church for some reason. Like my mother, she taught me how to pray, but we weren't a church going house, right? Like we didn't go to church. We weren't a Christian household, right? But for some reason, I was led to go to church. Like God literally called me into his house when I was nine years old, right? And so I need you guys to understand. I told you guys, the women in my family don't last long, right? The women in my family have all been on drugs, alcohol, and stuff like that, which led to their death. The women in my family most of them don't take care of their kids, right? Most of them have abandoned their kids in some kind of way. A lot of them were abusive. A lot of them were abused. So I'm just giving you guys a little background just to kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm facing with, the spiritual warfare that I'm facing with, right? That, that I'm facing, right? And some of you guys, like I said, may be watching this. So you may be able to relate. Hey, Vava. Hey, Miss Lizzie. Thank you guys for hopping on here. Um, just giving you guys just kind of a little background about just, just, just being transparent with you guys right now. But this is what, this is the type of stuff that I'm dealing with, right? I am the first, first of all, I'm the youngest of my mother's kids, right? I was the only one to finish school. The only one who was like literally, literally around, like 
you guys know I have an older sister. I love my sister to death, but she does not talk to me, right? My brother, somewhere, I, God knows where, but I share this to say that <laughs> I have been tasked with having to break generational cycles, right? Generational curses, right? And the thing about it is the enemy has been trying to get me all of my life, right? Every day of my life. And he has not been able to get me, right? So because the enemy has not been able to get me, he's going to go after the closest thing to me, which is my daughter. Now, if you know me, you know how much I love my baby. I don't even function when things are not going right with her, right? And the enemy knowing this, he uses my daughter to try to get me off track. But see, I recognize that. Hey, Kevin. Thank you for hopping on here. Thank you, Kevin. So being, being as though I recognize that I'm able to fight spiritually for my daughter, right? And the crazy thing about it is I'm in the middle of a fast for my daughter. Like I don't go out and I don't broadcast what I'm doing when I'm fasting and things like that because it's nobody else's business, right? It's between me and God, right? And the Bible says when you try to do all this stuff in front of man, right? That's all the recognition you're going to get. So I don't do stuff for man. I don't announce anything that I'm doing, but I'm literally in the middle of a fast for my daughter, but what is a fast without a test, right? There's always some type of test. There's always some type of um, adversity that's that's going to come your way when you are in the middle of a fast. The closer you get to God, the more he going to attack you anyway. And that's why I know that there's something special. There's something big on my life. There's something big on my daughter's life. And there's probably something big on your life. And this is why the enemy is so adamant about trying to take you out. And I need you guys to understand that this thing is real. Spiritual warfare is real right spiritual attacks is real the bible does not tell us to put on that armor if we didn't need it why why would he tell us to put on that armor if we didn't need it the bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood we wrestle against spiritual against spirits and high places and principalities and high places it's not always about what we can see and the, and and how i know that this thing is spiritual because the type of stuff that happens the type of experiences that i have that my daughter have it got to be that i know that it is Nobody can tell me otherwise, right? And so I just wanted to come on here just for a minute and just to let you guys know that this thing is real. Spiritual warfare is real. We are in a war. We are in a fight. I mean, you could look around you and see spiritual warfare. You ain't even got to, you may not necessarily be going through something personally yourself, but it's all around us. Like just, uh, I mean, like it's, it's so like we could go deep with this guys and and i didn't hop on here for that but yes recognize it Mercedes say recognize and deal with it we have to recognize and deal with it because if we deny that something is there we can't overcome it that's the way we overcome it right is recognizing that it's there accepting it admitting it and working to working to overcome it right and so Shamar says, girl, trust me, I said the same thing in my own house. You saying what I said yesterday, that's confirmation. Like, Shamir, I didn't even plan on coming on here live today. I'm not even in front of my YouTube background. Like, you, usually I'm downstairs or I'm in front of my YouTube background or something. But I just was literally just laying here. We got in not too long ago, and I was just on my bed, and I just felt heavy to go live and just to share how real this is. And let me share this with you guys. Let me tell you guys how I know. The enemy has been after me literally all my life. He was supposed to take me out a long time ago, right? And I'm and I'm real and honest with you guys about the fact that I was abused in several different ways. Now, there may be some people watching this that, that don't like it because I do have family that don't like for me to talk about my story, my story, right? But it's my story and it's my truth. And I share my truth. I'm very transparent because people come to me all the time and let me know how I've been able to help them overcome certain things and help them give them courage to talk about their story so i know god didn't bring me through everything he brought me through for me to be quiet so i'm not going to be quiet i'm not going to silence myself i'm not going to um protect somebody else at my own expense i'm not doing that so anyway let me just tell you guys this there's so many different things that i can share with you guys as to how i know this thing is spiritual but let me tell you something last year um well actually not last year 2019 now and i keep saying last year um, um, it was two, actually 2019 when I had, and, and I've actually never talked about this with everything that happened with my daughter and I'm not going to until she gives me the okay. So I'm not going to go into details about time. So I'm gonna get off here in a second. Um, but, um, so I'm not going to go into details about that, but let me tell you guys something. 
my daughter was attacked so much in 2019. It got to the point where I was like, devil, like you are so obvious the way he was attacking her. But y'all, let me tell you guys something about favor. God has favored me for some reason. I don't know why, but I thank him. He favors me. He favors my daughter. He lives. He literally shows me everything, everything. She cannot get away with nothing. He shows me everything. He shows me things that I need to pray about. He shows me things just recently. He literally told me to look under her bed. I just came upstairs. He told me to look under her bed. And, not, and I'm not going to share what happened after that. But he literally told me. I don't just go in her room just to look under her bed. He told me look under her bed. Right? These are. This is how God. Th th this is the type of relationship that me and God has. And I, can, and I always continue to ask him. Just please continue to expose whatever I need to see. And he does that. My baby got saved at First Baptist of Glen Arden in 2019. And right after that, we were watching, we were there for, they were showing the movie Sinners Wanted. And um, during the movie, for some reason, she just kept saying, Mommy, I need to go down there. I need to go get saved. She went down there. She gave her life to Christ. And ever since that moment, it wasn't like we weren't getting attacks before, but it got worse. That's how I know. I'm telling you guys what I know. I'm telling you guys what I see. And I still can't even go into detail. But when I tell you guys this thing is real, let 2019 she was attacked so heavily right heavily back to back to back back to back to back like she can't handle that right it got to the point where i was so emotional because it hurt me to see my baby going through certain things but let me tell you guys she was attacked by a pit bull right she walked down the street all the time from my cousin's house she was coming from school going to my cousin's house this big black pit bull came from out of nowhere literally came after her and mind you this was this was after a series of attacks so this is why i'm sharing you guys sharing this with you guys this was after a series of attacks that was literally coming back to back to back but anyway this dog came after her and when i tell you guys that my prayers reached my baby on that day literally as the dog got her coat okay this was a big black pit bull that dog could have killed her you know how many stories we've heard about pit bulls taking people lives literally as the dog got her coat at that very moment and somebody had actually called 911 because they heard her outside screaming and running and yelling for me i was i wasn't even around i wasn't even nowhere to be found i was on my way there but somebody said that they heard her screaming mommy mommy so, so somebody had actually called the police but anyway the dog literally got her coat at the moment that the dog got her coat that's all he got she has a tear in her coat from that the moment that he got her coat literally something called his name right and i'm just thankful for god every time i think about that i get chills and i get emotion because i think about what could have been but at the same time i thank god i thank god for hearing my prayers for protecting my baby and i'm going left i didn't even plan on sharing all that but i just came on here just to say that spiritual warfare is real spiritual attacks is real don't be walking around here thinking oh it's not that deep because it is the Bible tells us to put that armor on for a reason, right? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We out here fighting flesh and blood when these are spiritual fights. We can't be fighting spiritual attacks with carnal weapons, right? The enemy laughing at us when we out here thinking that we're going to fight with carnal weapons. We have to fight spiritually. I'm telling you guys what I know. I know I post a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, somebody said something to me about, you know, you post, but you didn't call me back or something like that. Just because I post don't mean that I want to talk. You have no idea what people are going through. Keep your mouth off of people. You have no idea. When I tell you guys, you see me smile. You see me post. You see all the great things that I have going on, which I'm thankful for. But guess what? You have no idea the daily battles that I go through spiritually, myself, the battles that I go through as a mother with my child alone. I'm walking this battle alone. Okay. I told you guys where I come from, the women in my family on both sides. And I'm just sharing it with you guys to let you know how real it is. Keep your mouth off people. You have no idea. I got on a church game night one night. Y'all have no idea. I got on that game somehow. I got on I got on that game in one first place. I ain't even been at my church that I've been there a few years. I, there's no way in the world I should have won that game. You know why? Because just right before I got on that game, I literally had been crying and praying and crying out for myself and for my daughter. 
right? Nobody had no idea. I got on that. It was on Zoom. Got myself together and was smiling. Nobody had no idea. Sometimes I'm posting LOL was something with a straight face. Y'all know how that is. Y'all know how sometimes you're going through and you you still posting and even posting something funny or even texting somebody back LOL and ain't got one got a hint of a smile on your face. You have no idea what people are going through. So before you want to talk about what somebody not doing or what they should be doing, just take a minute to look at yourself. Take a minute to, if you're concerned, pray about, pray, pray about that person. Maybe they might be dealing with some stuff like this stuff is heavy. Like, to, I know this year alone has been heavy. People are affected in ways that you never thought. Like, I talked to people and I had no idea they were dealing with some of the stuff they're dealing with. Some people that I know and see and talk to dealing with illnesses that I had no idea. You have no idea what people are going through. This thing is heavy. This thing is real. And I thank you guys for being on here and just listening to me talk for a few minutes. But you guys know I'm an open book. I share. This is what helps me. This is helping me right now coming on here and sharing my truth. And like I said, I know some people don't like it, but it's my truth. I don't care. God did not deliver me. He did not free me. He does not have his hand on me for me to keep my mouth shut. So if you don't like what I say, you can remove yourself from my page and I probably most likely won't even notice anyway because God has called me to a certain people and I'm going to continue to talk for those people. I'm going to continue to speak. I'm going to continue to share my story. I'm going to continue to, to encourage for those people. So I thank you guys for watching here. Thank you again for your prayers. Like I said, I don't normally go out there soliciting prayers like that, but I just really needed it. This thing is heavy. And I know you guys are dealing with some heavy stuff as well, you know, and I would definitely lift you guys up in prayer too, because I know it ain't easy. Like just this past year alone, and it's not getting no better. Like if you're a believer, you already know it's not going to get, if you know that this is written, like it's not, it's not like the, the, the closer we get, I saw a message earlier and he was talking about how the closer we get, the darker it's going to get. We should already know that. This thing is spiritual. This thing is already happening. Like everything that's happened, everything that's unfolding, we this stuff is written. We shouldn't even be surprised. Even like the U.S., like our country, we have been kind of shielded from a lot of stuff. Like this past year is nothing compared to what some other countries have been going through. Some other people, they can't even walk outside and talk about God without getting beheaded, without getting um, persecuted. Like we could walk out, like I tell my daughter all the time, like we could walk around and talk about God freely. Like the U.S., we've been like we've been kind. You know what I mean? And I, I'm not going to pretend to be no prophetess or nothing like that. I don't know, but all I know is the U.S. We have been protected. We have been good. We have been. God has had mercy on us when we do not deserve it. He has had mercy on us. So everything that's happening, yeah, it's scary. It's unpredictable. We don't know. The unknown is always scary. We don't know, but. These are the times where we really have to stay in the word of God. We have to stay in the arms of God and we have to keep that armor on, put it on and keep it on. Like, yeah, we know we can, we can quote Ephesians six, put on the whole arm of God, but do we keep it on? Like God literally shows me, I can't slip. Every time I start slipping, something happened to remind me, I don't get to be lax in my walk. I don't get to, I don't get to to slack. He don't let me slack because when I do something happens and remind me, you got to stay like you are the one who's get to be lax and, and lazy with my faith. When, even when I try to be, and my niece is, um, commenting and I'm just like, I'm, I'm trying to keep myself together because that's my niece. That's my sister's, um, youngest daughter there. Bye bye. Eva Williams. That's my niece. But God, he don't let me slack. When I get the slack and something happens to remind me, uh-uh, you slipping. That's the kind of relationship that I have with God. When you have a real relationship with God, you can't slip. When you start slipping, he lets you know. He jack you up real quick, right? And those of you who know what I'm talking about, who, who got that relationship with God, you know what I'm talking about. He don't let you slip. I have a task at hand, and because of that, I know I'm getting attacked from all different directions. And I know that's just what it is. That's what comes with it. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Maybe you can relate. Maybe you are the, the cycle breaker in your family and you can relate to everything that I just shared. I just wanted to say, just be encouraged. Don't take the armor off. Stay on alert. 
it is not a game out here. The enemy is always on his game. We need to be on ours at all times. At all times, okay? So, I'm going to get off here. My niece, Vibe Eyes, say, yes, auntie, speak your truth. Love you always. I love you too, Vibe Eyes. You stay helping me for real. Love you too, Vibe Eyes. We got cycles to break, Vibe Eyes. You already know. Like it, And I'm determined that it ended with me, but at the same time, I say it ends with me, but at the same time, I'm my daughter's dealing with some stuff that should have ended with me, right? She's dealing with some stuff. She's dealing with some stuff that I should have. I'm dealing with some stuff my mother should have conquered, right? You know what I mean? But we got to be the one. We got to be the ones that say, you know what? I'm going to end this, but I can't do it by myself. I'm getting text, text messages from my students and I got to get ready to go pray. So thank you guys for just being on here with me for a few minutes. Bye bye. I love you. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to go ahead and end this. Like I said, I didn't plan on coming on here tonight. I just felt it so heavy on my spirit while I was just in my room a little while ago, just to come on and just to encourage you guys, put the armor on and keep it on. Don't just quote the scripture, like really put your armor on. Remember this battle is spiritual and don't be out here trying to fight spiritual things um, with carnal weapons because he laughing at you, <laughs> like for real. So, all right, guys, y'all have a good evening.